the maker of this robot wants to change the way cities are built. So I asked him the million dollar question. Ali, are robots going to take over the world? I hope so. You hope so? <laughs> I'm not interested in robots taking over the world because most robots in movies look scary to me. But what if robots didn't have to look scary? What if they looked like this? Now that's a cute robot. I can rock with that. Not only is it cute, but it's built to answer a specific question Ali had about food deliveries. Why is it that we move two-pound burritos in two-ton cars? Back in 2017, Ali saw a problem with how reliant we are on cars. We move dinner with a car, but we also move the dining table with a car. It doesn't really make a lot of sense. It is incredibly inefficient. It creates emissions, it creates traffic, it creates accidents. We could solve that with these robots. To help reduce our reliance on cars, Ali created a fully autonomous sidewalk bot that's used to deliver small items like our dinner. Our goal is actually to take 5% of food deliveries off the road in the next five years. That would be about 100,000 vehicles just in the U.S. How will robots live among us? Are cute designs just a mask for evil robots? What will our jobs in our cities look like? This is a show about founders challenging the status quo. When I think about the future of cities, I know that robots will be a part of it. But how do you design a robot that humans will accept? We started off actually building a fully teleoperable robot. So the idea was that the very first delivery we ever did was completely controlled by a person remotely. And then we started introducing AI gradually. But there was a point where the AI was better than the human operator. And we noticed it because the human operators were making more mistakes than the AI was. The way they've made their robot autonomous isn't any different than other kinds of self-driving cars. They use cameras, LiDAR, and software to let the robot navigate its environment. What makes this robot unique is that it has what's called level four autonomy. So Tesla is a very good example of level two autonomy. The holy grail in this industry is level four which is a robot that can be by itself without people involved some parts of the time in some designed areas. And that's what we've actually achieved. There's a good reason why their robot is able to have level four autonomy. And that's because it operates exclusively on the sidewalk where if the robot does run into a problem, it can simply stop and request help from a remote operator. With tech, there is always this risk when you create a new thing that hasn't existed, that you might miss the mark. You may actually have unintended consequences. How do we make sure that what we are creating actually serves the purpose that we are looking for, which is serving people? We wanted to make sure that the robots are in the service of humans and not the other way around. That means all humans. That means everybody on the sidewalk. Sidewalk is one of those places that people come from every walk of life. They may not speak the same language, they may not have the same education or same background. So we've designed the robot with that in mind. So how do you design something that's intended to be used by everyone? For Ali, he focused on giving his robot a language that everyone speaks, body language. Let's say someone is coming in the opposite direction, and maybe it wants to yield to let them pass first. It stops and it kind of points itself towards the wall so that you understand that robot does not intend to come in your direction. Its wheels are kind of pointed, its eyes are looking down. By all those kind of body cues, it's trying to tell you what its intentions are. Just looking at it, what does this robot look like? Like design? Wally. Yeah, it does look like it Wally. It reminds me of something it like, like that. Dude. It looks like a person. <laughs> With the light, the eyes, it's like it's, it's alive or something, you know what I mean? This is our evolution of surf, and we learned a lot of things. The design and the form factor really matters. People's perception of robots is so negative by default, and we have that first few seconds when they see it on the street to change their mind. So this shopping cart 2.0 design really hits the mark. It's unexpected, but at the same time, it belongs to the sidewalk. You, you expect to see shopping carts or baby strollers, that kind of thing on the sidewalk. The shopping cart design of Ali's robot raises a bigger question about form factor. With AI, we no longer need to design things that account for a human driver. It's changing how we move things. We've designed cars around people and 
That's because we need a human brain to operate the car. Now we are removing the need for a person to be in charge of the vehicle, but we are still calling it a self-driving car rather than thinking about it in terms of anything in any form factor can now start to move. And all we have to do is put this engine and the AI together to make it movable. Ali's hope is that autonomous robots like the one he created will ultimately reduce her reliance on cars. For Ali, he sees the robot takeover as something to be excited about. If you think about 100 years ago when cars first entered our lives and then kind of put a side-by-side -side picture of a city back then and a city today, it is dramatically changed. It looks nothing like what it used to. I believe we are going through another transformative moment, just like 100 years ago. It's estimated that there's four to five parking spaces for every car on the road. That's empty asphalt taking up space in our cities. Our reliance on cars has turned what could have been parks and homes into freeways. Well, what if we got that space back? You know, I like to live in cities that are designed for people, where there is a lot more communal spaces, where we can actually get what we need without having to be wasteful. And these new types of vehicles, new types of transportation and mobility that are about to enter our lives are going to create cities that hopefully are going to be way more friendly and, and accessible than they've ever been before. You may be wondering what I've been wondering. Friendly robots changing cities. Cool. But what about robots taking people's jobs? If you think about it, examples from history give us reason for hope. ATM is short for automated telemachine, and people feared ATMs would take away people's jobs, but the opposite happened. Cash handling became less important for the teller. They needed to deal with more bank clients, and so teller jobs increased. Automating jobs ended up creating other jobs elsewhere. In the future, as robots automate smaller tasks, maybe people can focus on the more important things. <laughs>